Let's Talk is brought to you by the StarQuest Production Network and is made possible by our many generous patrons. If you'd like to support the podcast, please visit sqpn.com slash give. You're listening to Let's Talk episode 44, brought to you by the StarQuest Production Network. Father Corey Stika, welcome to Let's Talk, our weekly SQPN community podcast. Glad you could join us again this week. Uh, we've got a couple of couple of panelists, one of whom is a returning a returning panelist to Let's Talk. The other is new, but our returning panelist knows our return our new panelist quite well. So we have Shelly Kelly and her husband Brian is joining us today for Let's Talk. How are you both doing? We're doing great, Father. Thanks. Fine, Father. Thank you. Well, glad you can both join us, and this this work this works out well. They're uh, both uh, joining us from one microphone, so hopefully you'll be able to hear them pretty well. But it seems like they're doing well. Um, but uh, Shelley, of course, you've been on before. Uh, Brian, why don't you tell us a little about yourself so people can know about you? Sure. Um, grew up in Oklahoma. Visited uh, Texas as quickly as I could, and decided to stay. And uh, my wife and I met oh, 94 no 93 anyway <laughs> so uh, uh basically i've just uh been around and tried to do the sporting thing and the softball thing and be a good uh husband to my wife well that's a very good thing and that that actually kind of talks about or leads into the the topic we're going to talk about is a very controversial one at least it is within the church sometimes and that's youth sports and uh now what what's both your backgrounds in youth sports well my background i didn't play youth sports so much as a kid i was on the dance and then a drill team in high school hmm. but that really wasn't what youth sports has evolved into to today right um i have three children we have three children sorry honey and <laughs> Um, our oldest, we got her introduced into recreational sports. We tried soccer. We tried dance. I'm sure there was something else, maybe gymnastics. And she played softball. And then she started riding horses. Mm. Thank you to Papa. And <laughs> our second daughter hated soccer, hated dance, fell in love with softball. Mm. So we started down that path. Our youngest, there's a large age difference between our two girls and our son. He grew up on a softball field. Oh, sure. So he's all baseball all the time. <laughs> Future MLB told me with all seriousness, mom, I'm going to play in college D1. And then I hope to be drafted to the MLB. Okay. He's Good seven. For <laughs> Good for him. That's a good goal. So Brian has a different take, though, because you did play. So I played baseball at a very early age, and I have one brother who's nine years younger than me. And so we didn't really play together. Mm -hmm. I was I was into to sports and cars and girls, and he was into Legos and building blocks. Yeah. So we didn't have much of a relationship then. Of course, we do now. but. So I grew up playing a little bit of soccer, but mostly baseball, tried out for a D1 college, but I'm way too small. So it it, it worked out OK, but uh, baseball has always been uh, very close to my heart and mm -hmm. I've really enjoyed it. And so when when the girls decided they wanted to try softball, I was ecstatic, but I had no idea how different softball was from baseball. Mm -hmm. So. It's been a learning experience, but it's been a, a wonderful journey. Yeah, it's funny. I, I'm, I'm a huge baseball fan. I, I really never played. I think I did like one year in third grade when I when we lived in a town that had a you know youth uh, baseball program. Um, 
But for those of us who are baseball fans, the, the rules of, of softball are quite a bit different and how the game's played and everything is a, quite a bit different. It's, it's pretty funny how that works. Um, yes. And, and I also play, did some, some basketball. I really wasn't much of a sports person. I played a little bit of basketball, a little bit, did some track, and it was just kind of like, eh, whatever. <laughs> I was more into computers at that time. What a surprise. I haven't grown out of that either. But, you know, the U sports has changed. I think, I think you've, you've probably, you've kind of alluded to it, and you've probably seen it that even, even small towns like Mon- up here in Montana, U sports has changed from when we were in high school. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, you know, at least again in Montana, high school sports was pretty much it. You know, you, you didn't have anything outside of what the high school provided in most towns. You know, you might in the bigger cities, but most towns you had the high school teams and, and you had the you know junior high and elementary. And that was about it. And, it, and I don't know if that was your experience as well. So when I grew up, I, I had never known anything about select anything. Uh, mm-hmm. It was just rec ball. I grew up on rec ball, and then I played high school ball. Yep. Uh, things have changed tremendously uh, over the years, and now it's it's funny. My daughter's high school team, unless you play select ball, you will not make their high school team. Wow. Period. Um, all these girls that are playing are playing on a select team. There are several that are going to large Power 5 D1 schools after they graduate. Mm. Um, and so who you see on the field right now in high school, a lot of these girls grew up playing each other and uh, playing with each other on, on their select team. They play together. Sure. Uh, one, of my, one of my daughter's friends is on the same team with her right now, and she's in a rival school. In the district, so they see each other twice a year playing for their <laughs> high schools. Uh, and on the field, they're very competitive, and then off the field, they're all you know giving hugs and high fives nice. and pictures and selfies. And I'm sitting there going, "Well, we just played a game. You're not supposed to like her right now." <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, it it has changed tremendously. So there's a huge uh, there's a huge difference in in where we grew up versus where we right. are today. It's- right. It's become a business. Oh, yeah. You know, it's we, we see a real investment. We see that in Montana as well. Um, you know, there's a big controversy here because, of course, you've got the you know, Montana High School Association. That's the official, you know, organization that handles all high school sports. And I can't remember what the name of the, the national organization that's moving in. But there's, you know, there's more of a national uh, outside of high school uh Extra, extracurricular, I guess you could call it, uh, league that's kind of moving in. And that's uh, causing a lot of controversy because the high school association is trying to push out those players who play on this, these other leagues. And, of right. course, the parents and the, the kids are fighting that. They want to be able to do both. Another thing we have a lot of here in uh, Montana are the tournaments the traveling they they call them traveling teams and the the (laughs) the invitational tournaments where yes uh you know every town will have it like we call it swish fest here another town will have the you know so-and-so memorial tournament where it was a kid who who died or something like something happened and so now they've got this tournament to honor him and it's every weekend now if if there's not very familiar with that you know if it's not high school basketball the official MHSA basketball travel it's these tournaments and it's it's a concern and I, I started out by saying it was a controversy within the church at least in this area because of course when are these tournaments held weekends weekends All weekend. and of course you know of course they you know they don't start till noon on Sunday right yeah right <laughs> mm-hmm. I was at the ball field last su- Sunday morning we had to be there at 7.15 for an mm-hmm. 8 o'clock game. Yep. Now, we've never gone. This is my seven-year-old's baseball team. We've never played more than one, I think, maybe two games at this age level mm-hmm. on a Sunday. It's single elimination. We're a new team. This is just for experience now. They yep. won. <laughs> then we had about a two-hour gap and had to come back for another game. They won. <laughs> uh, then we we played another game 
And I'm sitting here going, oh, I was going to do the 5 p.m. mass. They won. Now we're in the championship game yep. at six. Of course. So I couldn't go at eight. Didn't couldn't go Saturday because we were playing a game in the afternoon. Couldn't go Sunday morning at eight. I could have snuck in maybe during the procession to the 10 a.m. mass all in my, you know, jeans yep. and hoodie, sun in baseball uniform with cleats, sweaty, mm. and then snuck out right after communion and made the, the game. But I thought I would go to the five. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, it didn't work. And I feel terrible about it. I just, I don't know what I should have, could have, would have done. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, it, it, I, my advice usually is try to squeeze it in like that. But, you know, that that's that's part of the big difficulty is. And I, I think it's kind of bigger concern, not just with mass, but with these kids schedules as a whole, because they're busy Monday through Friday with school. And then Friday night, they've got enough time basically to pack everything up and go to this tournament on Saturday and Sunday. And then they come home, hopefully with enough time to get their weekend homework done if they didn't get yep. it done on Friday or in the car. Yep, or in the car. And Between then, the games. And then Monday they start <laughs> up all over again. Yeah, that's more what we experience with our older, uh, yeah, our older daughter, or the second daughter. Mm -hmm. um, we've She's been on a travel select team now four years. Since 12 years. She's 18 You now. She's 16. Yeah, but about, about four years. And it's been a struggle, but I will tell you that how her character has grown and developed right. has more benefits than the negative mm. um, playing. And I can't speak for the other sports, but I don't want to leave them out. I know there's pe parents who deal with this with lacrosse and soccer. And I assume basketball. I know nothing about basketball mm. um, any other sports, but when you play on a team, you develop a real sense of commitment perseverance, um, that fortitude, you grow, you learn very quickly about choosing your attitude. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you learn about sacrifice. Oh, yes. And it, it's an all family commitment. And you, you make of it what you make of it. Mm -hmm. You know, if you choose to see it as a negative, you should probably stop. Right. If it's, if it's causing that much chaos and harm to the family yes stop it might not be for you you might have to back it up just play a rec team play it for fun mm -hmm. um but watching her we've gone through different spurts where i'm gonna quit no i love this game i'm gonna <laughs> quit i want to hang out with my friends i want to do different things no my friends are my team i can't let them down i made a commitment um and Brian and I were talking before, what was the age you said for girls that they usually hit that moment where they're either going to quit or continue? So for girls, uh, it's very interesting in that there's a huge fork in the road mm. uh, for softball. That age is 14. Right. And the reason I say that is because at age 14, girls... Uh, there's several reasons. First, girls find boys mm -hmm. and they no longer have cooties. Um, <laughs> and um, they have different interests. They they want to go out and hang out at the mall. They want to go do girl things. Right. Kia, Bruce, Brenna, she fights that every day. There's sure. there's things she's missed proms. She's missed dances and this sort of thing. Because she has a commitment to her team. Hmm. And that's hard for her. She, we, twice a year, I sit down with her before the season starts. Because season is basically broken, or the year is broken into two seasons. Sure. And we play throughout the year, the whole year. Oh, wow. Down here in Texas, it's you can, you know, a spring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we have... I, I calculated it. I think we have roughly six to seven weeks off for the whole year. Wow. And then we're playing. So uh, the age is 14, uh, where you either 
uh, decide you're going to play select ball or you decide to go do other things because at age 14 and you have 16 and 18 new teams that don't form because all the girls that really enjoy the game are playing select ball now. So there's no mm. rec. And what about for boys? Do we do you have an idea? Uh, boys, it's a little bit later. Uh, my understanding is about 16 mm-hmm. um, because now they're driving and now they're doing other other things. Right. But um, yeah, and, and that's the same thing with all the other sports too. I know a family friend of ours, their daughter plays uh, competitive lacrosse and it seems like every other weekend – since lacrosse is big in the Northeast, Mm. they're always flying up to the Northeast (sighs) for these competitive tournaments. So it's, it's crazy. It's a whole other world out there. Yeah. And I understand that there's some parents that, that don't have kids that are playing competitively. They sit there and look at us and frown at us and say, why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. You know, why are you spending so much money, so much time, so much energy and effort and what it is, it's for the love of the game. Right. My daughter loves the game. She hates to practice. <laughs> loves Everybody <the> does. <laughs> and no, so our son loves oh, to yeah. practice. Oh, that's fine. So uh, it's 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 a commitment, like Shelley said. And, and I will tell you that my daughter, as much as she can be goofy, she has probably one of the best characters that you will ever mm-hmm. know. Well, that's, and I contribute that to softball. That's the difficulty in criticizing sports too heavily. You know, again, as a priest, I have a bit different perspective because I see the 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 harm that sports does to the church. I mean, to be honest, Absolutely. you know, it pulls people out of the church because yes, they're yes. more focused on sports than they are on their faith. Yes. But I also see the benefit of sports. You know, you do see the the kids who they develop a maturity. They develop a uh, generosity, you know, at least, you know, with at least among their friends, but you also see, you know, again, being out here where these, these small towns kids. And I saw this in high school as well. I mean, kids here have gotten to know kids from other towns, you know, even their rivals, you know, the, the, the neighboring towns that, that we always compete against that are rivals and they're friends with these kids and they go and spend time with these kids. They'll go over to the town of Glasgow, 70 miles away and spend time with these competing kids and they enjoy their company and they enjoy being with each other. And it does allow for maturity. Now, with the caveat is that's if the team is managed well by the coaches. Oh, absolutely. You know, if, if you got a coach who is win at all costs, that hurts the kids. Yes. That, that negates a lot of these benefits of sports. But by and large, if you have a good coach who knows what he's doing and he does it well, it, it is a positive benefit for the kids. Um, it's just, it is hard though. Again, um, to find that balance between the the needs of the sports, you know, the, the demands of sports and the demands of faith, you know, bringing faith in. Now, to be fair, you know, we've had popes who have encouraged sports. John Paul II was huge in promoting, uh, promoting sports as, you know, recreation, as for growing in spiritual development and all these kind of things. So, I mean, it, it really, it's not something that's opposed to faith. We just need to find that balance. Yeah. And you said that right there, you said how much the coach influences the team and managing the team. And we've gone through several teams where we had issues with the coach and the coach is the single most important part of the Mm -hmm. team. If you have a positive coach, one whose goal isn't just win at all costs, but the growth and development of your players, both professionally and personally, both athletically and as the whole person, you're on a good team Mm -hmm. because you can have conversations. um, You can teach your daughter to or or son to be more independent. Hey, coach has benched me and I don't know why. Have you had that conversation with coach? I'm not going to have that conversation. Yep. 
because he's the coach. But you need to step up and say, hey, coach, what did I do? How do I improve it? What do you want me to do to fix it? Hmm. And how do I prove that to you? Yep. And so that's a that's a good conversation. I have pulled my daughter off a team because of a bad coach. Right. Or I haven't. He has. I turn to him and say, she's not playing for that person anymore. Uh, <laughs> the other half of that, when you talk about faith, is faith in the home. It's how you've raised them all the way up. And my son, we do make time for a kids club. Kids club, which our CCE program, okay. it comes first. Um, thank goodness it's on Monday nights, <laughs> not <laughs> not on Tuesday night practice night. Um, my daughter, the only part of CCE that my daughter did not go to is the last year, year and a half of Edge. That's our middle school program. Okay, sure. But she did go back in and Life Teen, mm -hmm. our first night in confirmation, our second year, was more important than the sports. She would leave practice early. She missed tournaments. Mm -hmm. She had to actually evangelize to the team what confirmation was because the coach isn't Catholic. He's Christian, mm -hmm. but he didn't know what confirmation is. Sure. And she had to tell him what it is and why it was important to her yeah. and why it was more important than that tournament or this practice. And he said, OK, how long is this personal commitment? And she told him when it was. And mm -hmm. he said, OK, I'll give you leave early on practice this day and you can miss that tournament for yep. a retreat. And I want you back. Uh, this, that, the other. Well, she continues to go on our fall retreat mm -hmm. post confirmation. And she keeps going back in and telling him, hey, this is a church retreat weekend. I'm not going to be available. And he knows her now. And he's like, OK, come back next week. <laughs> and the the really interesting thing about this coach, I will tell you, like like Shelly said, we've we've run the gauntlet on coaches. Mm -hmm. um, this coach, I would consider to be probably the best coach that we've had. Oh, that's awesome. And and when she when our daughter goes up to explain this to him. He not only sits there and listens to her, like Shelly said, he wants her to explain it to the team. So the team understands how much, uh, how important it is for her. Right. And the team gets behind her. Uh, and you don't see that very often. Mm -hmm. uh, the, these girls, uh, once you find a good chemistry with these girls, oh my gosh, it is phenomenal. <laughs> But they they also pray first before the t the games. And, Absolutely. And I often see her go up to the plate. She's got her bat. You've watched baseball players. Oh, yeah. They've always got this little routine when they step up to the plate. And some cross themselves. She's got that bat on. And she's like, Father, Son, Holy Spirit across nice. the plate. And oh, our awesome. son has picked it up. <laughs> I watched him step up to the plate, seven years old, and I see him all serious. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and there have been a lot of prayers being said during games oh i'm sure oh hail mary please let him catch this <laughs> <laughs> that ball goes up in the air i can get yep. through the whole hail mary before it comes down <laughs> yeah, exactly and there have been tournaments where i find myself getting really worked up this is when she was younger before i matured myself but I would find myself getting really worked up and at the other team, maybe the parents would be trash talking and you've got to calm yourself down or, you know, oh God, if we could just win this one, if we could get this and we'll that. And all of a sudden I remember hearing once, not, not my will, but thy will. And I was praying the, our father, it was like, <laughs> oh God, our father who art in heaven, please, please, please. And I got to that line Thy will be done. And I went, oh, you had to teach me a lesson here, didn't you? Yeah. I, I literally, I, I felt it and I took that breath and it was like, okay, not my will. Okay, God, if you want us to continue down this, then you'll open the door. It was closed. Um, mm -hmm. we, we went home. Yep. <laughs> and... Uh, but I had a, a better sense of peace and balance after I realized that. And then my mantra became, I love to watch her play. 
I'm not here for her to win a game or a tournament. I'm here to watch my daughter grow into a responsible, independent adult. That's my job. And to get her to heaven, she's got to have that foundation Mm -hmm. in her faith. But I am here because I love to watch her play. And once I started doing that, it it calmed me down as a parent. And I'm able to sit back, relax, maybe keep the book. And just enjoy it. Well, and I'll tell you that when you tell any child at any age, not don't criticize them right after the game and say, well, you didn't do this right. Mm -hmm. You didn't do that right. If you just walk up to them, give them a hug and say, I love to watch you play. When they had a bad game, it's incredible how quickly that attitude changes mm-hmm. and the outlook changes. It's everything. So you have to keep it into perspective as much as you want it to rule. Yeah. Um, it's a game. Yeah. Well, there's, there's nothing worse. Um, again, for me as a fan, I enjoy sports. I enjoy watching sports. I enjoy supporting sports. I haven't done as much recently for supporting like the local high school as I used to, but um, I enjoy it. But I hate seeing those parents. And I'm sure you know those parents because every (laughs) sport, every team, every league has them. They're constantly yelling. They're yelling at their kids. They're yelling at the other kids. They're yelling at the refs and the umpires. They're yelling at the coaches. They're yelling at the announcers on the radio. They're yelling at everybody. Nobody is doing good enough for these parents. And I hate to say it. These are usually they were like the the high school stars when they were in high school, but that's kind of where their sporting career ended. Mm -hmm. And so they're trying to relive that when they were in high school, at least again, that's what I see around here. They're trying to relive their high school experience through their kids. And when their kids don't match up or other players don't match up, they make sure people know. Well, just so you know, you just described me a few years ago. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Uh, And I wish I was kidding. But what I have had to learn, I've had to grow up and I've had to learn how to handle, um, you know, losses and wins for my child. You want it so badly for them. And the question is, is it really for them? Are you allowing them to play the game? Right. Um, And that's that's hard to separate sometimes. Yeah. Well, it's kind of the. Turn the topic a little bit, you know, talking about, you know, the measure of faith in sports. And as I said, John Paul II was was um, very serious about using sports as a form of evangelization. I found a page here uh, from a Catholic high school uh, somewhere where it's all just quotes of John Paul II in sports. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's actually an academy. It's even high, higher rank than just a high school. But he was very serious about that sports were something that could develop people, but could also be a form of evangelization. And I think that's something, I I don't know, maybe you have ideas. You kind of mentioned a little bit about it, but what the church can do to use sports as evangelization and reaching out to maybe these groups and such that are involved in sports to proclaim our message. I don't know. Do you have any thoughts on that, what we could do? Yes. Um, I don't know if you want me to go over them, but uh, <laughs> a couple I'm like, glad to hear. Them. Yeah. Yeah. No, I. It's it's hard to to. Intertwine the two uh, on some levels because mm-hmm. you have that competitive spirit, you know, win at all costs, fire and brimstone, you're going to do it. And then you got to remember, they're all God's children. Right. As Mm -hmm. much as sometimes you don't like that picture on the other side, you know, that's just the difference of being competitive and wanting to win, but not crossing the line into um, a a more divisive descent. (laughs) Right. But when when you're talking about how the church can get more involved in that. You know, it it really starts, I think, with um, the the uh, high school level, maybe that I the have a youth directors ideas. and all that kind of thing. You have ideas. I have some ideas. Okay. You have okay. Ideas. So one of the things I 
when we do travel, I have to look up where there's a church and what their mass times are. Right. So I, I can use mass times uh, to do that. But as I mentioned to you before we started, sometimes I don't feel comfortable walking into mass, especially in a place where I don't know the people in my I'm a sports mom shirt <laughs> and my blue jeans with my ball cap hair. So you got to take the hat off. Oh, yeah. And my son's in or my daughter has been playing a game. She's covered in dirt. She's been sliding. She's been catching um, pine tar on their hands. Got to go wash everything off. And then we come in and you get those looks Mm -hmm. and you kind of sneak in the back. And we're usually first two rows. We're right up front. Mm -hmm. But you sneak in the back and maybe you're on a time crunch. So you might be slipping in and hard, horrible it is to say they're about to start the first reading or worse. They're on the Psalm. (laughs) (laughs) And you know that if you're going to make that time, you go up and you receive and you walk right out the back door, which we never do. And so we feel terrible. If you get, you feel that you're being judged and looked at for not being appropriately reverent and respectful, especially if you're in a place you have never been and, you just you feel all those eyes on you. So I don't know that that's anything <laughs> that the church could do, but they might be able to advertise on some of the programs or on their websites. Hey, don't forget, you know, yep. St. Angela's offers mass at 8, 10, 12 and 5. Come on over in your jerseys. You know, we, we'd love to see you. Mm-hmm. All sports teams are welcome. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know how big a deal it is at your parish. Uh, yeah. I even thought too late, hey, we could have driven over to uh, the, the church by my office. But again, I'm in jeans and a T-shirt and he's in his, you know, uniform with cleats. Mm-hmm. I don't know how that's going to go. Yeah, and my thought on that is, is God doesn't care how you're dressed. I mean, I know you're supposed to be reverent and I understand that in the, in the, in the, our priest at our local parish really kind of makes a, a note of that, if you will. Mm -hmm. Um, but I also believe that God, he, he took his disciples they weren't all angels, you know what I'm saying? They, they, <laughs> they kind of had their own. They they kind of had their own issues. So if he is okay with you know the least of us, quote unquote, mm-hmm. then I should think that God's okay with me coming in like I look and in 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 being a part of that mass. Right. Maybe that's because I was a cradle Catholic and raised that you put on your Sunday best and mm-hmm. you got there early and you stayed for the whole mass and then left. Well, and I agree with that. Right. For the most part. Yeah. <laughs> well, You it, also see uh, scripture verses on the backs of batting helmets or, mm-hmm. or different. So you, God is present at these games. It just may not always be as visible. <laughs> She right. wanted to be. Right. Well, it's and I agree generally that on your average Sunday where you've got the time, it's 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 not like you're you're busy, you're just you're hanging around the house, oh, we better get ready for mass. Yes, you shower, you shave, you get dressed up, you you know, you make yourself somewhat respectable looking and you go to mass. You know, and mm-hmm. you st- and you get there early and you stay late type of deal. Um right. But yeah, if, if you're you're squeezing it in, how is that any different than somebody who's working, say, at a hospital or nursing home and has to duck in late and sneak out early because they've got this much time during their shift that they could go to mass and they're in their scrubs. Mm-hmm. I mean, good point. There, there's there's different scenarios. It's I, I, I would argue that the, the 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 complaint against people who don't dress up for mass are the people who just show up in G- T-shirt and jeans and not because that's their you know work outfit but that's because they were too lazy to get dressed up anymore Mm -hmm. you know and and that's a i would argue that's a legitimate complaint at that moment (laughs) yeah i I would i would i would agree with you you know i'll I'll give you one too we were traveling driving to colorado we uh, drove in spent the night in amarillo and i thought oh we should get it's sunday 
she'd yep. get up and go to mass. But all we had were our, we, we just had our car bag. Mm-hmm. We were all in leggings and long t-shirts. And I was like, do we go to mass? <laughs> and then we couldn't get anybody up. We were so tired from 12 hours of driving the day before. Do we go to mass? Oh, and the answer yeah. is yes, but we didn't make it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's imperfection. Well, and, and I, I will agree that it's been a complaint of mine for many parishes is we don't welcome people well. We mm-hmm. don't, you know, you, you always hear the story of the little old lady that's glowering at someone all the way through mass because you sat in her pew, assuming she didn't just stand <laughs> up to you and say, this is my pew and you will move. And I've heard that happening. Um <laughs> we don't welcome people you know if someone's there great again it's if it's it's one thing if you're the passing through family that you are traveling and you didn't pack nice clothes for whatever reason and so be it it's another thing if you're there every weekend and you're wearing the same sloppy clothes every weekend (laughs) that's that's again that's that's a very different scenario but we don't welcome people well when it comes to things like that and i agree that's one thing we could do. I like the idea actually of putting the parish mass times in the schedule, mm-hmm. you know, especially a larger parish where they might have five or six masses on a Sunday where you can say, Hey, I know your Sunday's busy, but you can find time here somewhere. I bet to come to mass. So here's our mass schedule. Yeah. Especially if the church is really, really close to the ball field. Yeah. That's a really good help. Now something else that comes to mind, we, We've traveled a lot in these last, what, four years? Mm -hmm. Uh, There's usually a two-week stretch where we are traveling for softball. And we've started to make those not just drive up, play, and leave. But sometimes you drive up and you might play two games in the morning and then have four or five hours in the evening where Mm -hmm. you can do something local. So we've started looking up uh, places of religious interest, you know. So I was telling you before we started, we went to Colorado. We've had a, a, a the big, what's that tournament? The, the Colorado Sparkler Sparklers. And fireworks. Yeah. Mm. So we've had a big softball tournament up there the, three of the last four years. And twice we've made it a point to go to the St. Francis Cabrini Shrine. Mm. I I wouldn't have just gone there, but we were already there. I was looking around for things to do in four to five hours if we had an afternoon free. So when our schedule came out, we did, we drove up there. We loved it as a family. We loved it so much. We came back two years later. (laughs) So then the next time we went up there, uh, we purposefully scheduled an extra day to drive through Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. And when we went to Santa Fe, Really, for one reason, we went to go see the chapel Mm -hmm. where the staircase is. The Lorette Lorette Chapel. Mm -hmm. And when we did that, then we did it. It was beautiful. We walked into the square and I turned my head and there's the cathedral, St. Francis. I said, oh, let's walk down there and poke our heads in there. Oh, my gosh, it was beautiful. And they had all these relics. It was overwhelming and just we just went in there, hadn't even thought about it. And then the next morning we purposefully had planned mass and we went to the uh, Chimeo, mm. which is about an hour North. And I understand it's a pilgrimage spot and I won't go into the details, but I'm just trying to show that we started incorporating That's uh, awesome. places of faith in our travel. So as we become more aware of the time commitment of some of these sports related activities, we're also seeking opportunities where we can continue to show to our children that our faith is more important and we can still incorporate it. No, so that it's a challenge, but you have to plan it. But if you're purposeful and mindful about it, right. God will lead you to it. Absolutely. Well, sure. I mean, how many, how many of these families will plan other things around those, those trips, you know, more secular type pursuits this isn't good as those are because i'm sure their families are going to museums they're uh, when they go on travels they're going to mm-hmm. you know boarding or concerts or going to movies or you know they're doing things as part of these trips so that that's good to- and we're now doing cathedrals that's, that's a good thing <laughs> and relics we love the relics that's cool you know and, and coming into the church um i'm i'm pretty gung-ho mm-hmm. um 
about all this and and I, it's really exciting to me everything is new to me refreshing to me um it's 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 a totally different thing and and i'm sitting here thinking you know we've got these two weeks what what baseball fields can we go and visit what mm -hmm. you know what national parks have we not hit you know the mlb parks now i'm thinking what shrine can we go to what nice. what church can we go to you're telling me we're driving for two weeks and playing for two weeks and we can't take two hours out of our time to go to two masses <laughs> yeah you know it, it, it's unacceptable now it is <laughs> yeah well that's that's just example i mean it's it's we have to live our example that yes we consider sport, sports as a good thing is important but we consider our faith as a better thing and more important you know be right exactly well and and the movie a league of their own mm -hmm. right when they're they're all in the <laughs> in the church and tom hanks comes in you know hey let's go we gotta go you know god god gets us he understands and then he's kicking everybody out and then he turns around and does the sign of the cross real yep. quick it's like okay I, right. I love that we're good i love we're that good. movie that's one of my favorites that's just such a Absolutely. great movie <laughs> we we quote it all the time now the good parts we quote all the time yeah there's there certain parts yeah not so much but yeah <laughs> so was well, there anything else you would like to to share about youth sports no, just if your kids are interested in sports, remember you're the parent. Mm -hmm. You know, you set the tone, you set the priorities. Um, for us, it's, it's something we enjoy. The scheduling has become more and more challenging, but as we enjoy it as a family. When our seven-year-old thinks that there is nothing better in the world than to go on a travel tournament, get to stay in a hotel, all five of us together. Ooh. Um, it, it brings the family together in ways we didn't expect. Sure. Uh, now it's challenging. Also, we have practice for our daughter is a, what, almost an hour drive one way. And so you and she have gotten the opportunity to have good conversations and, um, one-on-one -on -one time that, and gotten to know each other on a personal level that maybe you wouldn't have had here just at the house. Well, I would say this, there is a personal connection that you make with each of your children in, in whatever faucet that that may be. For me, it's connecting with my daughter during that time, whether we talk about school, whether we talk about, God forbid, boys, <laughs> uh, for, you know, whatever we're talking about, music, uh, what we classify as real music versus what they put out today. Mm -hmm. um, it's a chance to bond. It's a character building and a relationship building opportunity. If you allow it to become burdensome, burdensome, then it's not worth it. Sure. But take advantage of every second that you have with each of your kids. I mean, I've, I've got one now in college. I wish I'd spent so much more time with her. Um, but yeah, it just, Enjoy it for what it is and, and keep in mind it's a game. Keep mm -hmm. in mind the kids are playing and not you. You're the, there's a reason why you're sitting on in the bleachers and not on the field. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, just keep that in mind because I've been that parent. I've been the one that's yelled at the umpire. I've been the one that's gotten mad at the coach and I wanted to yell at him, which by the way, the select teams have a fantastic way of handling that. They have a 24 hour rule mm. that if you disagree or have an issue with something that was done or said in the tournament, you cannot approach the coach for 24 hours. It's a cooling off period. Oh, and gives you an thing. opportunity, right? It gives you an opportunity to kind of really gather your thoughts. And is it really, was it really that bad is what I thought it was yesterday. Um, and uh, so I would say, has it been worth it? Yes. Has the financial commitment been worth it? Ask us on the day we write the checks. Yeah. <laughs> um, but all in all, if if I was given the opportunity to do it again, I would absolutely do it. Very good. Very good. And that's good. Good point to wrap up the discussion. Uh, 
So just take a quick break before we go on to our picks of the week. I want to thank you once again for listening to Let's Talk and the other SQPN community podcasts. We have so many great podcasts to listen to. Uh, our, of course, our Secrets of Star Trek, Secrets of Doctor Who, uh, Jimmy Akin's Mysterious World, Catholics of Oz, so many others. I hope you're enjoying our podcast, and I hope you'll share and like our podcast, especially on Facebook. You can like and comment there. You can leave uh, comments on our, our YouTube site, share our YouTube links, and, of course, subscribe through iTunes, Google Podcasts, and the other podcast uh, sites and, and apps. Uh, we definitely want to thank those who support SQPN through our Patreon site. You can go to SQPN, sqpn.com slash give and join our Patreon site where you can donate so much a month uh, to SQPN. You get rewards for that. We also have some SQPN or some Patreon only benefits such as helping Jimmy Aiken choose uh, show topics. He will do one topic a month for Mysterious World on uh, whatever the Patreons, the patrons on Patreon. Uh, decide this week. I'd like to thank some of our patrons, Jeffrey M, Richard H, Michael F, Jonathan R and father Andrew. Thank you. And all those who support SQPN for your, your generous help. It keeps us going. It keeps the lights on figuratively and in Dom's case, literally. And so I know he appreciates that very much. We are looking for some volunteer help as well. We need people who are experienced with, uh, audio editing, especially with Adobe Audition, uh, to help us edit some of our shows. We also need people to be producers to help set up our schedule of shows and the topics such as Let's Talk, you know, help me pick topics uh, that we can discuss, uh, me and Dom both, to dis that we can discuss. So please do uh, contact Dom about that, help at sqpn.com. So now we're going to go on to our picks of the week. Now, did you both do picks or you guys got a joint pick? Well, I have one and I have one he can use. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my pick is actually a book. Uh, we got this book for my daughter, I guess, when she was 14 or 15 and she was making this transition. Uh, when you get into high school and you start to face tougher competition, you realize that it's a mind game and you can psych yourself out. You can step up to the plate and your mind is going so much that you just can't perform. Mm. So we had a coach who recommended to us a book called Mind Gym. It's M-I-N-D-G-Y-M. And it's about psychologically getting in the right space for the game. So it's Mind Gym, An Athlete's Guide to Inner Excellence. It's written by Gary Mack. And it's short segments, vignettes, chapters that have exercises for you to mentally prepare yourself and exercise your mind to be able to go into these highly competitive, tough situations. And I think it really helped her. I've given this as a gift to my niece and goddaughter who plays competitive soccer. I think I gave it to a nephew uh, also. But I recommend it to a lot of parents as their kids begin to grow into more competitive ball. Oh, very good. Sounds sounds very interesting. And how about you, Brian? What, what pick yep. did uh, Shelly pick out for you? So I was very fortunate in that uh, I looked really hard for about 30 seconds and my wife gave me something to talk about. So, that works. <laughs> yeah. So uh, always here to support you. Honey. Right. My uh, my pick uh, is an app that you can put on your phone or your iPad or your Android device. It's called Game Changer. And what it does, it's basically a virtual type score book or a book that you can keep mm. online. Uh, it keeps stats for you, uh, fielding stat, and it's just for softball and baseball is my understanding. That's okay. the only thing I've seen from it, but it's really interesting. You can set up all your, all your lineups and all your teams. And so once you play a team, that information, uh, an opposing team, that opposing team's information is still in there. So if you oh, play them good. again, you don't have to reset it up. Uh, but they show the actual field, um, uh, it's a, it's a description of the of the field mm -hmm. uh and 
it does a play by play. They just added this. It's really interesting. They added a play by play uh, to where if you're driving, you can have the app on and you can listen to the game. They have the sounds of the ball hitting the bat and the mm. crowd screaming in the background. And so and so just hit a single and brought in two runs or whatever. Um, but the really interesting thing that they do is it's a it's a paid subscription, but you're allowed to invite fans. Hmm. So you can invite your friends and family to keep up with your your kids or your, you know, whatever. Right. Um, and in that way, and it sends you an email update. Hey, this game's about to start. So you can hop right online, listen to the game or watch the game if you choose to. Uh, and it keeps like I said, it keeps the stats the whole season. So when those college coaches come and knocking, mm -hmm. you have stats <laughs> ready for there you. Go. So. Uh, it's it's a fantastic tool. That is interesting. So instead of just being, you know, keeping the scorebook like the old style books that you used to get at the, mm -hmm. you can still get at the stadiums, but instead right. you're actually, you're doing it in the phone and then people can be digitally, kind of like the uh, ESPN where they've got this, the score or the, exactly. the, the game tracker where you can sit and watch exactly. the updates of the game. That's right. And, and with this, grandma and grandpa who are 300 miles away who can't make it can actually watch the game virtually through this app. Oh, that's cool. That's really yeah. interesting. That, that was a neat idea. Mm -hmm. you... Absolutely. I wish I'd thought of it. No kidding. That's one of those ideas where you watch, you look at it and go, wow. That, yeah. If I had made that, I would, <laughs> whoever thought this is making money. That's awesome. Oh, absolutely. I just know it's not me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. I, I know that feeling. Uh, so my pick is uh, something a little bit different, but of course, being Lent, we have our meatless Fridays. And so my pick is fish fries, Parish and Knights of Columbus fish fries. Mm -hmm. So here mm -hmm. our Knights of Columbus do the, the fish fry in the church basement. Uh, fortunately, they've got a trailer that they do the actual frying of fish outside the church, you know, so mm -hmm. that the church doesn't smell like fried fish for the next week. But uh, they're always worth it. You know, I, I, I've never gone to a parish fish fry and said, eh, it wasn't so good. But the, uh, it's always worth, you know, of course, you get the community aspect and everything, and you're supporting usually the parish or the Knights of Columbus or some other organization. Um, right. And you get a good meal. You get a really good meal. And uh, it's very much worth it. So I encourage you, if you haven't yet this Lent, find your local fish fry or fish fries. You know, for those of you with multiple parish and Knights of Columbus councils and everything, there might be several of them close to you. Uh, I know when I lived in the St. Louis metropolitan area, the big thing was to try a different fish fry every Friday. There were so many of them oh. that you would go to different parishes and different nights, Columbus halls and whatever else and try a mm -hmm. different fish fry and then kind of figure out which was your favorite. So uh, that's that not like a bad that. idea. <laughs> yeah. So something, something to think about for the rest of this Lent, you know, as, you, as you're traveling around, find your fish fries as you're finding your mass say. schedule as well. So, I think we're going to come up with a new app where to find a fish fry and lint while you're traveling for baseball and softball. There you go. Just yet, yet another app. Maybe that could be an extension of Kath, uh, the, the mass times dot org is fish fries dot org. There, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Love it. So, well, very good. Well, Shelly and Brian, where can people find you if they want to hear more from you? Well, I blog at of sound, mind and spirit. Uh, but we're a little more active on the Facebook page these days. Oh, so right. I would tell people to go there. And if you really want to see good baseball, softball pictures, <laughs> you can go to my Instagram. It's Shelly S-M-A-S for sound, mind and spirit. Excellent. And I've got uh, I haven't started it yet, Shh. but I do <laughs> have a Facebook page called the Catholic Sporty. Oh, cool. And uh, I haven't really put much up on it yet because I refuse to do that until I'm actually confirmed next month. Ah, very good. So I can't technically call myself a Catholic sporty uh, yet, but it's coming. I, yeah, that sounds good. No, that's something to look forward to at the end of April. Oh, well, I appreciate it. Thank you, Father. And again, congratulations on coming into the church. Uh, Thank you. I'm Father Corey Stika. Once again, uh, you can find my homilies at frcorey.org. Uh, you can find me uh, throughout the SQPN podcast uh, network with uh, Secrets of Star Trek, Secrets of Doctor Who, and I pop up on other ones once in a while. Uh, if, if you would like to send us feedback on this episode of Let's Talk or any others, you can send that to letstalk at sqpn.com. 
And as I think of it, we actually have a little bit of feedback for this week. So we'll close with that once I can pull it up. I just remembered it. <laughs> so uh, let's see here. So Hannah uh, sends a sends us an email. Hey, I appreciate your podcast. I like the first one I listened to. Only listened to one so far where you guys are talking about priest life and how you got there. As a former cradle Southern Baptist, it helps me to get you. Now that I'm a Roman Catholic, I feel like your podcast might sort of catch me up on what I've missed and what I don't know, haven't learned after RCIA. Priests are people, too. Yes, we are. It's hard to believe we're not robots. <laughs> we're not automatons. We are people, uh, for better or worse. You know, that means we don't always live as we should. But thank you very much, Hannah, for and all those all of you who listen. But thank you very much for your feedback. We greatly appreciate that. Thank you once again for listening to Let's Talk and God bless. Yeah.